Hello and welcome to the Sousa Security Series. My name's Stephen Dickens. I'm joined today by Vishal Garawala. Hello, Vishal. Welcome to the show. Hey, Stephen. Thanks a lot. It's great to have you. So tell us a little bit about your role. Uh, from talking off camera, you spend a lot of time chatting to customers. Just tell us a little bit about your role for Sousa and what you do. Sure, sure, Stephen. So I'm the CTO for Sousa for the Asia-Pacific region. And I generally have uh, basically have three primary charters. The first two being driving thought leadership and engaging with our customers and partners in the Asia Pacific region. And uh, the third charter really involves around identifying technology trends to help define uh, SUSE's overall technology strategy. Fantastic. So Obviously, you're talking to a lot of customers, getting a, a fascinating perspective. We're talking about digital trust as part of this series. What are the challenges the, the, of the organizations that you're chatting to as they try and build that digital trust? Obviously, the threat landscapes may be a little different in your region. Where there's lots of challenges on budgets with given the macro climate. We're dealing with a skill shortage globally, I think, around cybersecurity professionals. What are those challenges that you're hearing directly from those customers that you speak to? Yeah, yes, yeah, Stephen. So when, when we talk about security, one of the most complex things about security is that it is a very diverse domain. It is very broad. And it literally stretches from your physical hardware to your software and to even the firmware in a particular device. And, and therefore the notion of security uh, becomes very nuanced because different organizations will have different security requirements. Different industries have different security requirements you know, based on the use case. So what becomes a real challenge for organizations then is that how deep they want to go in terms of defining the security requirements for their organizations uh, because eventually it can become like a, like an arms race you know for security you can get as many security you know products and toolings that, that are out there in the market but obviously you also have to balance that with the amount of budget that you have within uh, within the organization so i think one of the challenges that organizations are finding is how do I manage and balance uh, the available budgets that I have today with the right level of security uh, that can be implemented within my organization. Now, that is just one part of the challenge, the breadth of the security domain. The other challenge, obviously, like you alluded to, is this whole security talent war that we have uh, in the market today because we just do not have enough security professionals out in the market and this is a major challenge because you can have the best tools in the organization but if you do not have the right expertise and the right practices to implement it then uh, all the uh, technology solutions will be futile so i would say these are some of the challenges that i am observing when I speak with uh, our customers and partners, Stephen. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting the point you made there. Just the sheer volume of the vendors out there creating fear, uncertainty and doubt, competing for those limited budgets. It must be tough for the, for the organizations choosing, do I spend money here? Do I spend money there? And then, as you say, when you couple, couple that with a global skills shortage, I can imagine that sort of represents the challenges. So, obviously, you're having these conversations with customers. One of the key things I'm thinking about is how can these businesses boost their digital trust while handling the tough job of protecting their digital infrastructure and getting the most out of their security investments? We sort of alluded to it there. Can you expand? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So, I, I think one of the very critical uh, requirements that every organization will should look at when they are sourcing for solutions is that the solution is scalable, it is flexible, and it is open in nature. 
because uh, like i mentioned earlier security is never ending right so you may be investing newer security solutions in the future and we want to ensure that whatever newer solutions that you are going to be purchasing easily fits into your existing security architecture into your existing security stack in a manner that is very very flexible because if if you are not able to do that you will end up having uh, a landscape a security landscape that is very distorted uh, it is not integrated it is uh, you know very separated and that is not an ideal situation because when you want to tackle security you need to have a singular way to uh, to approach it and to have visibility end to end visibility within your organization so that the whole lego block type of a mentality uh, and and architecture is going to be very critical the other thing that i would also go to uh, go on and, and add a bit here is the uh, adoption of solutions that are modern uh, in nature and what do i mean by modern it means that they are built from the ground up to address the requirements that you need so let's take cloud native security for an for an ex, uh, for example there are solutions in the market that have been around for a long time for over 10 15 years and they have been repurposed to address cloud native requirements and there are other solutions that have been built from the ground up to address just cloud native require security requirements and i think the latter is what we should be adopting because they are purpose built for that particular use case uh, secondly uh, to to boost the security because of the talent gap that we see today when it comes to cyber security professionals automation will become a, a major differentiator because by automating what you are really doing is you are enabling your best security professionals that you still have within your organization to focus on the important security activities and then offloading the mundane security security related requirements uh, to the automation features of your solution so automation is going to be very key and and last but not least like i mentioned earlier nothing can can beat expertise and experience so it is imperative that you know enterprises engage with external experts and the greater security communities the open source communities for specialized knowledge and resources Vishal, fantastic conversation. I've been tracking the SUSE portfolio for a while. I think there's a couple of key components to it for me. There's the Linux distribution slayers as a foundational layer. And then from what you're doing at the sort of cloud native container security perspective with New Vector, am I looking at this right? I mean, is those the two major components? Maybe just expand and see how how they fit together to provide some of this digital trust framework that we've been talking about today. Right. So SLES is the foundation layer, is the operating system, and the container layer will run on top of the operating system. And new vector is what we use to secure the container layer. And how we do that is by securing your entire application, you know, CI, CD pipeline, with capabilities such as automation, scanning of vulnerabilities, uh, and so on and so forth. So that's basically how we are, you know, tying these two products together. Fantastic. You've been listening to Vishal and I talk about Sousa's position from a digital trust perspective. Please check out the other episodes. Lots of great content in those conversations, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>